Coming from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. If you can't tell, I'm trying to please everybody. <laughs> Just right in the middle. Last week it went, it went kind of long. This week yeah. I'm, I'm going pretty short. Yeah. Got a long day. Got some some things to get in, and we have a special, very unique person, athlete, fighter, guest with us to start the show. Uh, minus our guy Ant Bernal. No, no telling where he's at. <laughs> uh, Sean Sean Zaitel right there, boxing, boxing height, fight height. Excuse me, and uh, and uh, Carson named Merck. And the one only seven time, seven division world champion, Amanda Serrano. What's up, lady? How you doing? How's everything? We we good, man. We we uh we had Lou on last week, Devella. And uh I think what happened was Carson there, he I think he just saw the parallels between Lou and the female fight game and yourself. And he said, Yo, uh, let's see if we can get Amanda next week. And so boom, there you are. Congratulations no. with everything, darling. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, of course. I love doing um, stuff with you. I was kind of bummed out. I really was waiting and anxious <laughs> to have you commentating on my yeah. fight. Yeah. <laughs> but I hope you're feeling better. I hope everything I, is. I'm good. It was uh, it was unexpected and all that kind of stuff. I'm good. And I'm um, just happy to be back working and all that. So. I'm sure I'll be ringside commentating at least once before you're done, before it's all said and done yeah, for you. You have to, you have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know we talked about this a lot on NBC joint as well, but what are you feeling like? How much longer you got left to to to, to crack at this thing? Um, I have, I mean, about like two years left. I mean, I definitely, we're, the goal is to become Unspitted Champion. Hopefully that will happen by the end of um, this year. And then um, next year, the big fight that everybody wants to see. And yeah, hopefully big fights after that. I mean, I don't, I don't see myself. Uh, I say I want to be retired by 30, 34, 35. I'm 32 now. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you see yourself, Amanda? Obviously, you've done everything in fighting. Do you see yourself just staying in fighting once you're done? You know, whether it's training or promoting. Oh. Definitely, yes. I, I definitely want to go back to um to my island, Puerto Rico. I definitely would love to open up uh, like a center or gym for for young girls to come in. Um, definitely do like a tournament for or like all girl tournament. So I'm definitely want to stick in it. I've been in boxing all my life, so definitely got to stick in the sport. It, it's it's giving me stuff that um I I dreamt of, and now I gotta you know stay with it. Yeah, that that performance, I think we all knew how talented you were. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we all talked about it on the episode after that. We were like, it was just, it was just special. Like Sean said, when he brought you on, it was just watching your activity, your skill level is, was, do you think that was like kind of a statement? Like, Hey, I am who I am. I'm one of the damn, damn best fighters out there, male or female. Yes, definitely. We always, um, you know, we have the haters and you have the people always critiquing you. Um, but, um, we had actually an easy opponent for this for this fight. And my, my coach, Jordan, he said, no, there's no way. We're going to be on NBC Sports. We're going to go back to our island. Main event, there's no way we're going to get this girl. We're going to get a better girl. So that's why he picked Daniela. She's a you know three-division world champion. She's four and beaten very credible um, fighters. And we knew she was a game fighter. She was tough. So we said, why not? So that was definitely a statement fight. Go ahead, Sean. Amanda, you know, you're probably already headed for the Hall of Fame for what you've done in the sport. But do you feel like if you could beat a Katie Taylor to become undisputed, you would then get mentioned and, and revered along in, in Puerto Rico along the lines of Benitez and Gomez and Trinidad and Cotto? Do you feel like that could, that could happen if you were to win that fight? Well, I, I'm definitely – less right now I'm, I'm in those names with those great Puerto Rican fighters and you know I'm, I, I believe in um in Puerto Rico I'm definitely in the Hall of Fame and and in the Museum of Sports so I was honored for for that but um I I, I mean definitely with the Katie Taylor fight beating Katie Taylor I would you know make solidify that I am one of the well the best female fighter but I mean that if that fight never happens, I still can. Cons- my Puerto Rico will still consider me as one of the best. How how realistic do you think it is for that fight to happen? 
I think it's um pretty realistic. I mean, I'm doing what I have to do. I, I'm raising my, my value up. I'm going out and I'm I'm trying to become an undisputed champion, just like Katie Taylor. I am a seven division world champion. So um, I'm just making um the 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 pay, you know, go become a little better. You know, I mean, as Sean Porter, he knows this is a business. So <laughs> now it's prize fighters. Now you know we've been did all those fights. For, for a little bit of money. Now it's time to to make something out of this sport. <laughs> and what about Jelena? Oh, I mean, I, I definitely mm-hmm. want Jelena. She has a fight coming up now with Ring City. And, right. you know, she's defending her WBA. So definitely the winner of that fight. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not targeting Jelena. <laughs> I'm targeting that WBA belt. And so I was targeting, she, at that time, she had the WBC and WBA. I just want to become undisputed champion. And these women, if they want to become undisputed champion, we have to go through each other. So, you know, it's not nothing against Jelena, but I definitely want the WBA. Mm-hmm. Why, why would you win that fight against Katie Taylor, Amanda? What happened? Why would you win that fight against Katie Taylor, Amanda? If, if well, it's I, really when I, I am. I am younger than Katie Taylor. And I, I believe I'm stronger than Katie Taylor. Uh, we both very skillful uh, women fighters. Um, it would be definitely, that's a 50, 50 fight. And it's definitely going to be a hell of a fight, but yeah, I believe I'm just a lot stronger and younger. You, you mentioned just, you, I mean, both you and Katie are extremely skilled. The fight yesterday with, with Ebony Bridges uh, and Shannon Courtney, that was maybe less skilled and tactical and more, I mean, they threw the, <laughs> the entire time. You think it's almost a double standard where, a fan will say, ah, that fight didn't have any skill. I don't want to watch it. But then there's a fight with male fighters and they're like, eh, you know, it was all action. Do you think that it's a little bit of a double standard? It definitely is. I mean, in, in the sport of boxing, we have, yeah, we have, you know, A fighters and we have B fighters and men and women. And um, yeah, I mean, a fight like that hopefully will open the eyes to, to fans saying, yeah, they're not, it, it was just an action packed fight. And, you know, people like team blood people like to see wars and you know if you bring more of that if you i try to bring more action and more um, knockouts to the game to excite people and to come into the sport and, of women boxing but yeah it's definitely you know there's some guys that i've seen on tv and i'm like are you serious like yeah. <laughs> like come on you gotta put a girl a good girl fight on that show but you know it is what it is well, I'll go ahead, Carson. No, I was going to say, just to touch briefly on going back to that fight yesterday and kind of something outside the ring, there was the whole thing with the weigh-in attire. How, how did you kind of come down on that debate with the back and forth there between Bridges and uh, Courtney? Well, I really I, I really don't get into that. I, really, I saw bits and pieces, and I heard a lot about, about the fight. Um, you know, a lot of people's sex sells. I mean... I mean, I don't, I don't, that's not my route. I try to do what I have to do in the ring. I perform to my best abilities and, and I, I put on a show and I bring fans that way. But, you know, if it, if it helps them and it, it, it brings in eyes, then, then you throw in a great fight and then people will be interested and stick with women boxing. Yeah. So sex sells and knockout sells too. Why, why do you yeah. feel Knockout part. This is a knockout part really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why why do you think you're able to get, you know, just a, a higher percentage of KOs than most female fighters that are even world champion? What is it about your style and where'd you get that from? Well, I was I was blessed from the Lord above. He gave me punching power when I was born. I was a, a little uh, a little nut when I was young. I used to jump over uh, walls and my mom used to tell me, like, man, we knew something. Something was going to happen with you because I was just a, 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 a tomboy. But I don't know. I just, when I started with boxing, um, my coach Jordan was like, you're pretty strong. Even in the gym, weightlifting, like I, I did numbers that young, I mean, an average girl or even a weightlifter is, you know, it's hard to. So I was like, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm just blessed. Where'd you get that style from, too? It's, it's beautiful and exciting at the same time. You're going after these girls and slipping shots while going forward and hitting them. Maybe you know, you're taking well, that small opening and nailing them. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of um, screaming from my coach and, and a lot of, you know, my um, I consider myself I'm 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 
the racehorse and, and my coach Jordan is the, is the jockey. So, you know, I just train hard and he's just, he's just guiding me down the right path and, and training me and, and teaching me the right stuff. So yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I just picked it up throughout the years and him and watching a lot of fights with him and him um, getting some style, style from my sister. So it's just a whole combination of a whole teamwork. Were there any fighters that you, you, you liked particular, you know, to influence in the style or? No, not at all. I mean, like my favorite, I, I um, my favorite fighter as a, was Miguel Cotto. He was my, that, you know, that was the left hook to the body or the right hook. One of the right hook to the body, but um, no, I, no, no one in particular. <laughs> and, and Amanda, too. I just gotta ask, like, other than it's just you and Manny Pacquiao. When you're talking about champions in seven divisions, do you think there's something, you know, more special about how you did it? Because you know, 2018, you fought for a 140 pound super lightweight title, and then just four months later, you're fighting at 115 pounds. Most guys, it's you know, you started 130, then 35, and 40, but you went, you like zigzagged everywhere. Do you think? Yeah. yeah. The, as a woman, as a woman fighter, we have to go where the opportunities are at. So that's how it happened. And the 140 to the 115, that was the beautiful mind of my my trainer, Jordan, because when I was like, what, 115? We could have done that when we was down at 118 already. <laughs> but um, no, because, you know, records are meant to be broken. And if it was ever to be broken, it won't be in the style that I did it all over the place. All right. Yeah, I was just about to ask, is that kind of, it seems like that's the mindset now is to go for records. Is yeah. that that kind of like your goal now is just to go for records, huh? Yes, I'm definitely mm-hmm. done as of right now. I'm done with the divisions. <laughs> so yeah. I don't okay. know in the future. But now is now is um, the goal of um, becoming on the Spirit of Champion. Wow. And I want to say that because that's definitely a goal for us because in Puerto Rico, there's never been an on the Spirit of Champion. They've yeah. been yeah, uh, champions in every weight divisions and there's been seven division world champions. So I want to give Puerto Rico the first on the Spirit of Champion. There you go. So proud of you. You, you do a terrific job you sh- and sharp. Just sharp, you know, and it's in and out of the ring, which is which is amazing. And and uh, congratulations to you on your last victory. Hopefully I'm ringside commentating on the next one. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so, too. I was I was really bummed out. I was like, where's yeah. Sean? I was hoping. But then they told me but I was, I was hoping for your your well-being and you was OK. So yeah. I said one day he'll, he'll act. He'll tell me how I did. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. Sinisa Estrada might have been better than Sean, if we're going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> She did a hell of a job. She, was she really did. Fun. She did her thing. I was so happy for NBC to find her and for that all to come together the way that it did. And and then, you know, you you did what you were supposed to do. So, yeah. <laughs> and Bermuda, she's a good fighter, too. She'll be for back. Sure. Oh, no. Yeah, she, that's what we picked her. We knew she's a tough fighter. She's a yeah. durable fighter. Yeah. And uh, my, my coach told us, told me in, in the very beginning, he said, we know that she's, um, she, she's tough. The very, the first couple of rounds, she will yeah. make, she will tie you out. So that's yeah. why that was the whole plan. We knew she was strong. And uh, my coach said, now let's, let's box her. Let's hard, hard punches from the outside. Mm-hmm. And we're going to wear her down. The last two rounds, we're going to come out hard and, and could just confuse her. And that's what we did. The, I know I was hurting her and hitting, hitting her to the body and hurting her to the body. Yeah. But the last the last two body shots was. I know Carson texted me just before the fight started. How many rounds is this going to go? I said, <laughs> uh, I said, this is going to go some rounds. He says, um, Amanda's knocking her out, right? I said, this girl's strong, you know, and I get that inside scoop from being able to study and all that. I knew she was going to be strong. And I think at the end of the day, she came in there and I guess for the sake of words, did her job and you came in there and performed brilliantly as always. So we look forward to seeing you next time. No doubt. Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank you for blessing the Port Away podcast. It's close to unify. There you go. There no you go. About it. All right. Bye, champ. See you later. Thank you for having me guys. Have Absolutely. a good one. I, uh, somehow Bye, I booted our guy and, and then now forever? he can't get back in. Yeah, like it's kind of like forever. So, oh. yeah. He... Well, I guess that's time for the official announcement. Sean, as I tell, <laughs> taking over for, for <laughs> permanently. Now he'll be back in here soon. I was like, yo, uh, get you another email and, and get back in. So he'll be back soon. He got banned. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's on me. That's on me. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. A lot of boxing yesterday. All day. A lot of boxing. 
And let me let me do my usual disclaimer. Was it too much boxing? No. <laughs> let me do my well, technically, kind of. Let me do yeah. my usual disclaimer of these fight cars happening on the same day at the same damn time. Because uh-huh. <laughs> even because even if you look at the zone, the zone obviously it's overseas, but the zone is early. So yeah. At early on, early afternoon, it's beautiful. But then you get to the night and you got you got to go two screens to get the uh, Showtime and top mm-hmm. rank action. But mm-hmm. um, the the card over over in the UK was I thought it was entertaining. A lot of those a lot of those fights. Um, like we talked to Amanda with the the Bridges and, and Courtney fight. They they threw the entire the entire fight like yeah. from from beginning to end. So that, that was fun. Um, and then, um, Savannah Marshall get, gets the win there as well. Big mm-hmm. stoppage and, mm-hmm. and they did doing a lot of talking Clarissa Shields way. Yeah. And then that af- afterwards was the Eddie, Eddie Hearn, uh, trying to talk of the Clarissa Shields fight and she obviously responds on Twitter, but, and then Connor Ben, he <laughs> blew the doors off <laughs> Samuel Vargas, like yeah. from, from jump street. What did you think of the stoppage? Uh, I, I thought it, it, that was what I expected, you know, quote, let me, let me not say that. Um, I knew that Vargas wasn't, was just going to be the guy that kind of, he was the opponent. Yeah. And so with that being said, it was, I this so this is my second time seeing Connor Ben first time, uh, for Mella, his fight against, um, Sebastian for Mella, v- very good boxer. Um, you know, picks his punches very well, uh, good pace, things like that. Um, but with this guy and Vargas, it's like you brought an opponent in so that you can look the way that you look. Then it's no knock. It's just yeah. that, you know, it's only so much you can take from that fight. You know, um, I feel, uh, feel a lot different about Jerron Ennis's fight. I, and I know we'll get there, but mm-hmm. I just felt like there were those were two different types of opponents that came into the ring uh, yesterday. I think they were probably I think they were probably hoping for something similar to what Lippin Yetz did, where he was there for a while because mm-hmm. Vargas was a pretty durable guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that was going to be the hope was that he was just going to be there and kind of stick around. And Connor Ben obviously kind of have a little bit of a showcase, but um, man, he he blasted him out of there expeditiously. <laughs> and now people want to see him fight Amir Khan or Sean Porter. Sean Porter, right? yeah, Tell Brooke. yeah. I don't know. Connor Ben, it he's really good. I think he's really talented. I don't think he's ready for you or Errol or Bud. I don't hate like an Amir Khan or Kel Brook fight. I don't think they would take that fight though. I don't think it makes any sense for them. The one one fight that was interesting. Let me know if you're feeling this one, Sean. Both Sean's. What about Adrian Broner? That makes Adrian. So I think it's the same for all three of those guys. Go, go, Sean, I'll let you answer first. Go ahead. No, I don't think that. Well, I don't know. It's all, you know, it's a business. If they can make it worth Adrian's pocketbook over there in England, then, you know, that's a start to it. But I, I don't think Adrian's looking to fight guys like that. I think I think a fight maybe with uh, Keith Thurman would make more sense for Adrian Broner right now. Get a guy like Keith who has a name. They both lost um, – well, AB had this, a fight in between now and then, but they both lost recently to Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. You know, AB was very adamant after the fight and talking about how he didn't get dropped the way Keith Thurman did. So I think that's more the type of fight. I think I think AB would rather fight Amir Khan, and Amir Khan would probably be would rather fight AB. Adrian than Brown. Yeah. 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 Who who do you think who do you think might be realistic for Ben? I know Evanesian or Evanesian is is a guy that yeah. They kind of threw around European champion. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, not too many names really come to mind because guys like Jamal James are on the PBC side. That would mm-hmm. maybe be a good fight for him. Jose Cito Lopez is on the PBC side. So yeah. um, he'd have to venture over here and, and probably fight one of Al's guys to get a to get the kind of match he needs next. He's a fiery dude, Connor Ben. Yeah. Like, he was. he was like, there were some times I think Eddie Hearn was joking and he was like kind of, he was, he was fired up. I liked him though. I think he, I think he's good. And I think he's got the pedigree obviously with his dad being, you know, legend over there. I Dad's think. A warrior. Yeah. I, I think he has that. He clearly has that spirit. And I think he's talented. I'm um, just going to be a matter of kind of in a similar vein, like Sean, so we'll get the boots, but he's kind of in a similar 
pattern where it's like Virgil mm-hmm. Ortiz boots and Connor Ben. I think those two are comfortably better, but yeah. they're both trying to find the next step that is a step rather than just exactly. somebody where it's the same. Exactly. Well, can, you know, Britain has its guy to be in the mix. Yeah. You know, the last decade, it was Khan and Brooke to be in the mix with our American fighters at welterweight. Looks like they found their guy. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I hope, I hope it just, won't be any of those three guys. It won't be Adrian Brown or it won't be Kell Brook. It won't be Mir Khan. Um, none of those three guys that I just named are fighters who came into this sport um, with with any expectation to do anything less than what they did. They all expected to do great things in the sport, and they all did. Um, but they've all come into the come to the point now where they are not the same fighter, uh, but they aren't willing to bow down to that. Uh, none of those three fighters want to be a gatekeeper. And once you sign the dotted line to fight uh, Connor Ben, now you've basically declare that you are a gatekeeper because nobody's going to expect you to beat Connor Ben. Everybody's going to expect that to be the the name or the fight to put him over the top. And none of those guys, especially Adrian Bronner want to be in that position or going to put themselves in that position. I don't, I can't see, I, well, you know, I don't know any of their pockets, so I can, I don't know what amount of money, um, uh, Eddie Hearn could offer either, either three of those guys, um, to be to 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 sign on the dotted line, but I don't see it ever. I don't see it happening. Uh, I I know my name was said after the fight, and that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um. I'm at a point where uh, I've been down the road. He's been at. Um. He's got 14 fights now, 15 maybe. Um. I've got 30, 34 fights. Um. 35. 35. Is it- yeah. 35 or is it 36? <laughs> I think it's 35. I think you're 31, yeah. 3, and 1. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 35. Yeah, so. Shout the Julio um, Diaz. With that be <laughs> Everybody, Calvary, it's Calvary crazy. Diaz is doing well. He is, he is, he is. is. He? I'm happy yeah. to hear that. He, every, it's crazy because uh, every, nobody knows what the who, who the draw is. Yeah, it's just like, it's just yeah, 31, 3, and 1, and everybody's like, What's the one mean? Yeah, they just kind of brush past it. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody's like, What's the one mean? You know, when you were so, running that down, uh, when you were talking about Amir, Kel, and, and AB not wanting to be gatekeeper, I was going to say you're in the similar status. Like, it's yeah. just you're not there right now yeah. and probably will never be there. And and I'll speak for myself. I'll speak for um, Keith Thurman. I'll speak for uh, EJ, Errol Spence Jr. I'll speak for Danny, probably even Danny Garcia. We're at a level now where we don't look behind us. If I have to search your name, if I have to figure out who you are, where you come from, and then I have to say, oh, you're Nigel Ben's son, that's that's how that's more than likely how after only 14, 15 fights, you're you're as relevant as you are. I you're not on my level. Guys are on my level. I don't have to search. I don't have to figure out who's who. We know who's who's are, you know. So when you got a guy like Connor Ben saying, Oh, yeah, I fight Sean Porter, I'm saying. Why, why would I fight you? Why would I give you an opportunity to become e- any more than you are right now? You, To me, you you only have 14 or 15 18. fights. A- 18? 18. Oh, well, that's all disrespect for me. It's not, uh, you're not, <laughs> 15 to 18 isn't drastically different. But It's not, but that's but all 18 and 0. For me. 18 out. and 0. And so when you're 18 and 0, you, you, you still have to continue to try to grow and get better. And the best thing I could do right now at 33 is just kind of put myself in that situation where I, when I was 18 and 0, and I know we talked about this before, but my my 33 year old self would beat my uh, 18 and 0 self because when I'm at 33, I know more, I'm better, I'm stronger, the, the, and the list goes on. And so it's just one of those things that's hindsight. You never know until you get there. Yeah. Uh, guys like Eddie Hearn who's looking for this kid to be great and to get that big name and all that kind of stuff. He's saying other people's names. So I, I, and I read into this yesterday, you say Sean Porter's name, but then you, and then you revert back to Amir Khan and Kell Brook. You said my name. So everybody would, would look up off of their phones and say, Oh, he said Sean Porter. Yeah. want to fight Showtime Sean Porter. And then now you have my attention. Not now you have my attention. You're going to feed me Amir Khan. So now, now I want to see you against Amir Khan, you know? So yeah. I, I read into that too, you know? So uh, I didn't, I don't take any, um, per, I don't take it personal or anything like that. I think it's a part of the game. Yeah. And, uh, and I was there once upon a time ago. So, you know, just one uh, difference here 
is if Khan and Brooke aren't going to fight each other, though, and, and one difference between Khan and Brooke when it comes to Ben and an Adrian Broner, and to get even further out, someone like you or, or Keith Thurman or something like that, is there's actual economic interest in England in making those fights for yeah. Khan. So if Khan yeah. and Brooke aren't going to fight each other, and they're not do any kind of title shot, then maybe why not give this kid an opportunity if there's some money into it? Yeah. And it's a credit to Ben that the reason why not is because he's dangerous. There's a good shot. He can win the fight by yeah. knockout. So, yeah. yeah. I was, uh, just, and because I know, I know somebody going to give me some heat for this. And I, I said he was 14 and 0. And then I even said that he was 15 and 0. And this is my point. I'm texting a guy who's over there in the UK. A guy who has no reason not to root for his his fellow UK fighter, but the guy is like, yo, he's saying your name, he's saying Earl Spence Jr.'s name. He's not ready for those guys. He's fourteen and zero. I just read the message. He's fourteen and zero now, so he threw that Bad information. At me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I get on the podcast like, yeah, he's only fourteen and zero. But that again, that came from a guy who's over there. If the guy over there does not know exactly what your record is and and who you fought and things like that. You're not ready for the big show yet. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's no disrespect. You know, it's know. Just, you gotta you gotta pay your dues and you, you gotta, you know. And, and 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 even with that being said, everybody is starting to find a different path to the belts. Uh we're seeing Ennis. We saw Tiafima Lopez do it. Uh was that late last year now? Late yeah. last year that he won that fight against uh, Lomachenko. We're starting to see guys uh trailblaze this thing a different way, which is amazing. I'm happy for that. But sitting where I'm sitting at, nah, I'll pass. Yeah. And then move on from that. Top rank had a long ass undercard on ESPN Plus. We're not to that yet, but go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I just I no. know PBC Fox Sports. <laughs> Follow at PBC on Fox. Is <laughs> um, <laughs> a in the heavyweight division looking like our best prospect over here, Ife Ajagba, with the highlight reel top five sports center moment last night with that right. That, that, that right hand wasn't fair. No. <laughs> that right hand was not fair. He crumpled him like a piece of paper. Oh, that was oh. just a couple big. Like and then obviously Jared Anderson, like you mentioned, probably the best we mentioned before on the show, probably the next American heavyweight champion. Um, very high for him. Yeah. Very oh, high. He, he, he does. He doesn't. It's not stiff like a heavyweight. Yeah. Oh, he. He's got, got great got, personality. Yeah, he's got a little almost James Tony swag in there. You know, he's just confident and relaxed. He's a relaxed fighter, and he's fluid in there. Yeah, yeah. that that a jogba right hand though. There, I'm not sure there's a lot of people that that are standing on their feet after getting hit with that thing. Right. Yes. That's physics. There, there's just something <laughs> how when, tough you are. when he when he when applied he fought, physics to the yeah, fight. It was, yeah. a, it was Isaac Newton's going down on that one. We had a. So he fought on the undercard of, of you versus or versus Ugas, and he fought Amir Mansoor, who older veteran guy. And he came out at the way, and we're like, okay, you know, he looks like a sturdy guy. And then a jogba came out, and we're like, okay, better you than me, because like <laughs> it, did, it just looked like like Mansoor next to a normal like person looks like he would just be a monster. And then a jogba comes out, and he's looking down on him on the way, and I was like, okay, yeah, that dude is. We had a short era of uh, relatively smaller size heavyweights, and I think now we're kind of getting back to the. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, say um, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> and then shout out to it to our guy Sean Zaitel. Pretty much predicted the main event of right. of the top rank card of last Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And and just, just and real quick to close on the jog, but I yeah. was happy to see him do that, uh, Carson and Sean, because. He, when he first came out, what really caught my eyes, other than what Carson said, the fact that he looked like a monster, was uh, he he threw a lot of punches his first 10 fights. Mm -hmm. And then he got into this war on the undercard of Tony Harrison and Jermel Charlo's rematch. Yeah. It, it, he got dropped two, three times. He dropped the other guy two, three yeah. times. Mm -hmm. and, and then his stock dipped a little bit because of that. And then he gets with Kay Karoma and he tries to work on on boxing and things. And then last night that, that paid off his, his offense is developing better, mm. but um, to, to get the full complete package. Now you'd like to see that early intensity when he came from Nigeria to the States mixed in with this 
new skills he's learning with K Karoma. So he he's back on on his stock going up now for sure after that knockout. So definitely going up. It's yeah. definitely going up. Uh, yeah. I think when Big you time. are a heavyweight, when you when you can effectively use both hands, and and then on top of that, if you if you are willing to punch a little more than the average heavyweight. Your stock is always going to rise. And you're always going to be a fighter that everybody's looking forward to, especially when you get devastating. That was a devastating knockout. Yeah, you night. put somebody down like that, that your, your stock will rise, I assure you. Right. That that was one uh, that I only watched one time. Like, I, yeah. don't, I don't re-watch them. <laughs> that, I can't that re-watch was, them. That, that was wicked. Um, but yes, I, Smith, last song. How did you how did you have the the card at the end? I think you and I were pretty similar. I have Vlasov by maybe a round or two. I had the same because I thought he put forth a, a better effort in the majority of rounds. But Smith, he possessed, you know, the three most decisive rounds. I mean, he had moments where it looked like he was gonna knock Vlasov out. But without a knockdown, those are the same 10 9 rounds that Vlasov won by being just busier and being trickier. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I thought he won seven out of 12. I actually think, you know, I'd have to rewatch the fight, but I actually think it'd be a little hard to find seven out of 12 to give to Joe Smith. I thought Andre Ward's card was good. You know, a draw is fine. Yeah. But I just thought Vlasov was was trickier. He threw more and he landed more in a majority of the rounds, and that should usually win you to fight. Tricky, tricky is a good way of putting it. I think the word we always use is awkward, which I used with him, but tricky was good because he, like, He's a little herky jerky with his movement mm-hmm. and like he's leaning down low and he's kind of, he's just, his movement's a little odd, but he was, like you said, he was, he was very active. Um, he had some rounds where I really think he did some good stuff. Obviously he cuts him in the, was it the first round that he cut yeah. him in? So second, I mean, second round. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you get that early on, but yeah, I, I thought it was, a, we talked about, it. it wasn't a robbery. Not every scorecard we disagree with is a robbery. I thought Vlasov won. Am I devastated and angry that Joe Smith got the decision? No, not really. He's not American. chocolate. It's not chocolate Tito. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was a good. It was an action fight though, and Joe Smith finally gets the uh, world title he's been going after. Yeah, that guy was uh, very unorthodox, but you can't really classify him. I would classify him more as tricky than I would unorthodox because. I've seen this like time and time again. You get guys who are unorthodox is like they can't help it. This is just who I am and this is what I'm going to do. Like he he was awkward, but he he had strategy uh, that came along with it. And so it, it made him tricky more than it made him just awkward. He's awkward. And if I just figure out a way to get to him with this jab and this one, too, I should be able to get him out of there. That never happened with Joe. Joe was able to find a big right hand here and there through the course of the fight. But for the most part, this guy was kept Joe off balance. It it kept Joe second, second guessing himself, hesitating and and all that. And it was really just due to the guy being tricky. He wasn't orthodox, but I would actually classify him more so as tricky than I would unorthodox because it was like everything that he was doing, he was doing it on purpose and and, and, it, and it had purpose. It wasn't like, this is just what I'm going to do this time. Like yeah. he, 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 the movements he was making, he, he had purpose. Behind he was him. deliberately, deliberately, uh, Lee, yeah. like, deliberately, Lee. Like, deliberately, Lee. Dude's doing, staying in the range where Joe can finally catch him. What's he doing? It? Oh, uppercut, uppercut. And then, and then, oh, he drops his hands and you think he's pulling out and he's going to get caught. And then Joe throws it and he bop. He does that over and over again. So he had tricks up his tricky. He had yeah. tricks up his sleeve. Yeah. yeah. So. And he could take a punch too because Joe For landed sure. a couple right hands. And, he, and y'all know me. I, I, uh, <laughs> when, when I want you to win a fight, I'm all in, man. I'm jumping up and down, you know, here and there. My son playing with his Play Doh and, and he, he looking up, you know what I mean? So I had quite a few of those because I thought that Joe. Once he landed that that big overhand right, a couple t- there were a couple different cases where he landed it, and I just in my mind I thought, okay, this is it, you know. And that was it. like that, we've seen yeah. it happen before. Yeah, and that was like that kind of for me. I scored it a draw. I thought it was fairly a draw. Um, yeah. You know, I and I don't think I was there was any um, bias opinion on wh- who I was giving around to. I thought it was flat out a draw. And I thought that the only thing that would really, you know, capitalize 
you know, in this fight for Joe would be a, a big knockout and it never came. And so I was like, draw or Joe, draw or Joe, you know, and then yeah. I, I was glad that he got the decision. I'm not going to front on that. Any of those three outcomes, Joe yeah. by a close win, draw, or Vlasov by a close win, I really had no issue with with any of those three outcomes happening. But And then that it was on the same time as the Showtime card, and I was <laughs> mad. I was too screening it, but I was mad. I was also watching baseball, basketball, and soccer yesterday, so I was struggling. But did you? So did you get a chance to check out Stanley on this and uh, Delorme? Like and here Delorme. and there. Yeah, yeah. I, I was. I was. I was obviously focused more on the main event on top rank, but I, mm-hmm. I was able to um, catch a little bit of it. I, I thought it was a good fight. It went pretty much exactly as everyone expected, and as the broadcast said, they're like, "Yeah, Delorme starts fast. He's going to look really good early. He's going to get some rounds, and then." He'll probably tail off, and that's exactly what happened. He yeah. looked good early, yeah, and then tailed off and and lost by a pretty comfortable margin there. But yeah, he's a, he did some things against. Go ahead, Sean. Go ahead. I thought Delorme though. Yeah, he oh, he definitely faded in the second half compared to the first half, but that was a close fight, and I thought he fought with more uh, with more reserve than he did before. He he was fighting like a guy who knew his career was on the line. You mm-hmm. know, like he could be twenty. He was after this fight, right? Yeah. yeah. And he, he was nailing Stadionis with, with a lot of good punches early, and and it looked like he was going to possibly get stopped just because the pressure of Stadionis, but he, he fought a really good fight. It's tough to get a draw or a decision against the undefeated A-side guy. Of, you know, I just give props to Thomas. He fought a really good fight, and Stadionis is he's straight up and down, but he's, yeah. he's very sharp, though. He's very sharp. He's got a good jab, but I, had a, I, had a, I got a friend out in L.A. He says, man, I've sparred with that standing on his kid, man. He's strong and he's hard. Like, I've had some good days with him, but even my good days are hard days. Like, what, And he asked me, he's like, what, what would you do against standing on this? And I, I like, you know, I said, hey, man, it's, it's a lot to text. <laughs> I can't really text all this. And I don't feel like talking to you over the phone right now. So, yeah. But I thought that what Delorme did yesterday, I was very impressed with Delorme. I thought that I thought the fight would go eight rounds. I thought the fight might possibly go ten rounds. Um, but I and I thought that it, even if it went twelve, I thought that Delorme would get knocked out. He did not. And I'm not saying that that's a victory for him because he n- didn't get knocked out. But he's going to stand on his body. He's going to stand on his head. Yeah. He's moving. He's doing. He, when when you fight a guy like Stanley on his, keeps his hands up. He's tight. He's strong. It takes a whole lot, and it's a long work night. And it looked like the the Lorme was up for the work night, you know. But the thing about him is he does start off fast, and he he kind of you know he tapers off towards the middle to the end of the fight. And um and and so moving on to Montes, he remained poised. He continued to work his strategy. Yeah. Uh, he never got frustrated. I don't think I saw any frustration come from him yesterday. And I think he grew after this fight. I think when you go 12 rounds for the first time or 10 rounds, was it 10 rounds? 12. I think is that a 10 or 12 round fight? That was a 12 round fight, wasn't it? Yeah. When you go 12 rounds for the first time and, and you've never, I don't think he's ever been past eight prior to that, you know? So when you go 12 rounds for the first time, you're going to experience some things. And even though nobody, including the ref doesn't see it, your, your corner may not even see it. You see it and you feel it for yourself. And so if anything, I'm just, I'm, I'm proud to see uh, Stanionez do what he did through 12 rounds against a crafty veteran and remain calm and cool. We talked about Julio Diaz when we started this bad boy off. That was a 10 round draw for me. And it was a very tough night. For me. <laughs> it was a very tough night, very tough controversial night for me because I just, uh, Julio did some things that I wasn't quite uh, prepared for mentally yet at that point in in my boxing game, you know. So um, I was I was impressed with uh, Staniones as well as Delorme. There's not a lot of, and as we move into the main event, that there's not a lot of Julio Diaz type guys right now in welterweight. Right. So I think that's where the frustration comes from, because for these guys like Virgil Ortiz Jr., even Conor Ben Boots Ennis, there's not like a Julio Diaz or one of those guys that Luis Calazo was that guy for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, you know who the one was a name job. Uh, Jesus Soto Carras was, Oh was, man. He's I, another guy that yeah. he was, he was a veteran. He was going to be there. Mm-hmm. He was going to, he was going to bang with you and he was just going to be there. Uh, there's not like those guys have kind of faded out just 
in this era. So it's tough mm-hmm. for these guys. Um, one quick thing to go back to the top rank card, Tommy Morrison's son's fighting. Oh man. And he's fighting a guy that they said he was like, he d- does power lines after natural disasters. Like he was like a union man, like, yeah. And just like a tough as hell. And he clearly drops him. Yeah, he did. <laughs> it was, I didn't even think it was close to not a, not a knockdown. Yeah. And the ref doesn't, he says, nope, pushed him. Yeah. And so he kind of, he doesn't push, but he kind of, he, Pushes I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. And they're they're in Oklahoma, right? Yeah, Tulsa. They're, Oklahoma. they're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And this ref is just like, uh, he, he he's like, uh, it didn't happen. Go ahead and fight. Like, yeah. And what was funny about that? So they so it's not a knockdown. He gets them to their corners, and <laughs> before he so he sends them back in, the dude keeps looking at the ref, and I was like he might steal on the ref right now. Like he literally, I thought he was just going to be like bump this and was just going to pop the ref. Cause he uh-huh. kept like looking like, man, this dude just completely jacked me. Like it would be a huge upset if I win, obviously. Um, but he ends in up Vegas and LA and in New York, mo in most cities, most States, uh, the athletic athletic commission is just like an umpire in baseball. You touch the ref, game over. It's done. I went, so when he pushed the ref, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, do your job. Yeah. <laughs> and, but the ref was like, the ref knew like, hey. he was he knew he was wrong. Yeah. He wasn't quite sure. He's and, just and, like, he took the push like a man yeah. was like, oh, go ahead and fight. <laughs> and know? the guy ends up hurting his ankle. So so the fight can't go on. And the ref ends up apologizing. And the guy also apologized. Like, hey, I was upset. But kind of just a funny moment in the like, in ring, they right five fans. Yeah, of course. Yeah, shout out to R.I.P. Tommy Guns. Um, but so we go main event showtime. Let me just be the one to say it. Jerron Boots Ennis is comfortably better than Virgil Ortiz Jr. Hold on, there he is. Hold on, hold on, right on time. I'm just gonna right be the on one time. to say it. <laughs> Stan Jonas should play that. Uh, should fight that meme machine. There he is. That ain't the dog. He's connecting in. Stan Jonas Kaviaskis battle for Lithuania. Oh, I like that. Love that fight. Ant struggling. Oh man. I make this bold proclamation that we gotta sit here looking at this guy's scene. No, 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 fan. don't don't yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll walk. No. So I, I just yeah. you watched that fight last night, and i I would find it hard to for somebody to be honest with themselves and say that Virgil Ortiz Jr. is better than Boots Ennis right now. What did you what was your proclamation that you just I just made? I think he's I don't I don't think he's I think they're the future of welterweight, uh-huh. but I think Boots is comfortably better than uh-huh. Virgil Ortiz. Like, I'm not sure it's that close. It's really, it's really. I think we'll see. Pressure and work rate may be his equalizer. And hey, baby, what's good? Man, we back, man. Where you been? Hey, hey the, the Porter way. That's on me, man. My fault. My Someone's fault. was trying to fire you. I, I made the announcement afterwards that you had been replaced by Zatel. The that was how he got it. Got you out of there. Oh, yeah. I don't know. So I don't know what the move is going to be beyond this. It, it, it might be just Sean at this point because yeah. you you are like locked out or something. It said it said so. I was I did it and it said report. I said no, don't report him. He <laughs> just reported him. He reported him. <laughs> that was wild. Even even I'm a, so I'm I was I logged in on my lady account on the computer. I said hell no. I had to log in on my phone. With her account on my phone, that didn't work. Dang. Wild times. That's on me. I owe you uh something. Yeah. Uh-huh. You good? You good? Yeah. So, yeah we'll push through. So it. What we got we got boots boots stopping Sean and Earl. No 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 no. Don't do that. Hey, go, Don't do uh, that. Go ahead. Oh, Muty. Muty. Hey, <laughs> no, so I I think he's competitive in those fights, but I don't. I I think there's still there's still more processing that has to happen again going back to that there's not really a step up guy um but he man he ver, if you watch Jaron Ennis what else do you want like what else, what are you looking for as a fight fan or as a as a expert as a critic what do you watch let's, him let's talk life? let's talk the fight and then let's talk Jaron yeah. so so go ahead Sean the fight he just Man, he just showed everything. I I, I was ready to, to go on to what's next because of how good he looks. But uh-huh. he, he, what I loved about the fight, other than all the stuff that's always caught people's eyes, the, the beautiful uppercuts he could throw from outside. He goes to the body. He had he's a two fifth. He has power in both hands. He's slick. He's fast. 
What I liked what I saw last night was something I didn't get to see in other fights. When Lipinets caught him and Lipinets can punch and he got him with a couple of good hooks on the inside, mm-hmm. every single time Jerron Ennis got hit, he responded like a Philly fighter. Mm-hmm. And he he came you hit me with one, he came back with three and mm-hmm. four and five. Mm-hmm. He wanted to punish him to to never let him get any momentum. He responded like a Philly fighter or 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 uh you know Eric Morales who was from Mexico used to do that. <laughs> But what's what? But the thing is, certain Philly guys would be a little too Philly for their own good. Meldrick yeah. Taylor, yeah, Major taking punches because they they when they don't need to, especially Meldrick Taylor when he was young. Mm-hmm. The best fighter ever from Philly, Bernard Hopkins, was slick and tough and mm-hmm. can take a punch. Mm-hmm. And Jermon Ennis might have that. Mm-hmm. He's slick. He has upper body movement and athleticism. But when he got hit, he came right back. With and the two. thing, so and the thing with him. And and because I and I love that you pointed it out because I love that too. But I love that he didn't force it. He got hit. He didn't even he did, so he didn't acknowledge getting hit. Right, he didn't. He, he didn't it right. was it was like it was just like the sequence just continued on. And 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 on top of that, he didn't rush to get back that getting hit. You know what I mean? It wasn't like oh I got let me get you. He just took his time and he and he stayed poised through it all. Man, I, I'm very impressed. What about you, Carson? I, I just don't like I said I don't know what I don't know what else you could have looked for like yeah. he he was fighting he fought great southpaw he fought great orthodox he had great speed he had great power he's like like Zaitel said he's slick he's powerful he's it was just it was a great performance from him even though the one was not a knockdown <laughs> um, clearly the legs were tangled up but mm-hmm. um, yeah and then he he puts them down and Lipinets we were wrong so he didn't get stopped by Mikey he got dropped by Mikey right. He gets put, he was down and out, but yeah, I just, I, it's, it's unfair to compare the two fights because they were different, but it's natural because those two are the Virgil Ortiz and, and boots of the two, the future at Walter Waite. But I just like Virgil Ortiz had a really good performance. We talked about it after it happened, but I just don't know how you watch that. And you think, nah, Virgil Ortiz Jr. I think is better than boots. And I just I don't know how you could. I'll, I'll, I'll play up for Virgil. I think, Virgil's work rate, uh, fundamentals, and pressure can make up for a guy who's even more talented than he is. Because when you're facing a guy who's more talented, you're going to have to go forward anyways. Because if you fight a distance with him, he's the more talented guy. So okay. Virgil is already kind of fighting in the style that he'll need to fight to be on equal terms, terms with Boots. He's throwing a lot of punches, and he's putting the pressure on. And, and so... And he's got great fundamentals. So. And I know, and I know that Ant. I know Ant wants to move forward and say some wild stuff. So let me no, say no, this: no, 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 no. Not, no. let me. You you got something sensible to say about yeah, the fight? No, I, no. no, I just felt uh, that it's a good fight. But I just in his footwork, I think that'll be the difference in that fight. He's gonna dance around Virgil Ortiz. Mm-hmm. You heard it here first. A, pr- a five-year prediction. I just Top 14. <laughs> Are you did I not just say he was going to do that? Oh, and both, oh my God. <laughs> and both, and both of them. It, 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 that's how sports is. But like, those two are gonna be champions. I have no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. They're the future. And so, yeah, and to say Boots is better than Virgil Ortiz right now isn't saying Virgil Ortiz Jr. is bad. Yeah, it's not right, even right, saying right. he's just decent. Right. Virgil Ortiz Jr. is great where he's right. at. Right. Sen is just better guy like right. he like Mahomes more than Lamar Jackson yeah it's cool. right. it, yeah so y'all know me I gotta play the devil's advocate in my whole thing when, Let's I, do when, it. I, when I watch the fight is you got a guy in front of you who who does not have any foot movement guy in front of you who has relatively no head movement not even s- 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 slow as as as, as molasses he he was he outmatched Lipnets in in just about every facet of of the boxing game, and and I think we all knew that, but we wanted to see what challenge Lipnets could could uh, could impose uh, or, or propose to 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 Ennis, and Ennis, I mean everything. This dude this dude threw some pivots in there, and, and you know how I love pivots. I mean, my man. <laughs> Because 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 Ant talked about him dancing around Virgil yeah. Ortiz. We don't even want to talk about him fighting Virgil Ortiz. We're not going to see that this year. We're not going to. We more than likely won't see it next year. But the, so I just go use the word dancing. This dude was literally dancing last night. Like 
it was it was it was crazy. And I'm a guy who I pivot like my footwork, my foot game is like I always thought my foot game was was next level. Jerron's foot game is like ridiculous. Is like if I say stupid, my son gonna come here and I don't want to hear his mouth. So <laughs> I mean, but, but do, you think, it, do you think Boots is a better dancer than you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to fit you all. Because you called out, I don't know how to you called out Danny down. Garcia very directly at your press conference. Oh, you yeah, a better no, Danny, I dancer. Than I had to though. Danny. I had to though. <laughs> I think I think Boost might have you on the dance floor. We're gonna have to find now. out. We're gonna have yeah. to find out. We're gonna have a breaking yeah. breaking three. Hey, so I, but, I, no, I did I did want to say that I did want to say that before we move forward. As great as we can say, Boots was. We still have to you know obviously recognize that he had a guy in front of him that you know just was not on his level and. I was I was hyped for this fight. I was hyped to see uh, Boots get in the ring, but I was hyped to see what Lip Nets was going to be able to do, and you know, and to 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 uh, to challenge him. And I mean, dude turned southpaw, and it's like it's like night. It's like boom. Let let me counter counter what you were saying, where you said that he had a guy in there that just wasn't on his level. It, we we thought it was a legitimate debate on who was a bigger win, Maurice Hooker or Lip Nets. So it wasn't like we thought he was just going to wash him like that. I think that shows how good boots is that like right. that they fought guys that we thought were similar levels. Right. And Virgil Ortiz was clearly a level above hooker, but boots is like a lot better than, than, yeah. than we, the lip and yes, we saw yesterday. Yeah. So what's next? Who can fight? He's not getting a champion. Unfortunately, Ant. is he fighting Ant? Y- y'all asking me who he's fighting? Yeah. Who's it? Who you want to see? Ant? Uh, I'm team Ennis. I'm not throwing him up there in the top five yet, man. I'm just, I mean, I guess if you lose, it's kind of like a uh, Canelo situation where it doesn't really kill him. Yeah. But he's going to have to go back two fights and go again. Uh, I'm not sure if the opportunity is even there to fight a guy in the top five, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, who can, I mean, out the top five, I don't even know. I don't even know who. Who's even in the middle? And, and, and <laughs> that that's the issue. Like Jamal James is one that's kind of thrown around there. Um, who is the kid? Oh, I tell. Who is the kid that was? Okay, you don't want to fight Jerron Ennis. Yeah. Who is the kid that was supposed to be a mandatory for Errol with the IBF? Was it was it Ak- 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 Um He's from Uzbekistan. He yeah. was like a man. He was going to be a mandatory. He's like. 18 and 0, something to that effect. And he was like kind of going to be in the mix there. He's another guy, maybe, but like I think he blows that dude's doors off. Like, and Carson, even if you do throw him in there with a top five guy, is he a draw? Like, my lady didn't know who he was. She was like, Who's who this boots? Guy? Yeah, it, it's like he's a draw to us. Yeah. But like that, outside, you know, you know, yeah. there's, there's like the, the core boxing, and then it's another level out there. Then it's a Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao level. Yeah, I think he's I, just four level. Yeah, that's kind of how it was for me when yeah. before I fought uh, before I fought um, uh, Alexander Devin. It was like if you were a hardcore boxing fan, you knew who I was. If you you know watch boxing here and there, you didn't know who I was. But after that fight, it was kind of like, all right, that's sh- that's Sean Porter. When's he fighting again? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think the same thing would go for for Boots. I think it's yeah. just really he's a fight away from 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 being a a big time fighter. I just I don't know who it is. If he steps up and fight one of you guys and loses, duh, does it hurt him? Not not drastically, I don't think. It doesn't. I mean, I've, it, it, this is what I always say about a loss, and I think that this is what gets lost. And, and, lost. and yeah, what gets lost and in, in is uh, it's not about losing. It's all about how you lose. You know what I mean? And so for a guy like Boots, who's young, you can you can always I think you know the the best uh, comparison we do have nowadays is the fight between Mayweather and and uh, Canelo, saying that Canelo was too it was too soon for Canelo, and I think the same thing would go now if he was to you know lose to a guy that that just slightly outboxed him and you know kind of maybe a guy like me maybe rough him up a little bit or something like that getting getting to do anything different getting to to perform any different than he normally does and i think if if anything people are saying okay he lost that one but he'll be back you know i don't really think that and and i think that i think that boxing is kind of again it's it's hard to say what where boxing is going now 
I think everybody wants boxing to be just like the UFC. The UFC puts the best against the best. And I think that people are, they're, they're almost willing to accept the loss with the understanding that we just saw two great guys get in the ring and one guy lost. It is what it is. You know, that, that should, that should be the mindset, but it's not normally the mindset for, especially not for boxing fans. Yeah. When there's just not, I keep going back to it, but there's just not a lot of middle ground. So it's tough. It's either you're fighting somebody that's either a has been or never was, and, and you kind of a step up or it's to the top. It's to yeah. the top five. It's to Errol, Bud, you, um, Ugas. It's it's just tough that I just don't see, like, what if a guy like Connor Ben, if he's like, I'll fight him, yeah. beat Connor Ben, it's like, all right, cool. You beat him. Yeah. Then what's next? So it's just, yeah. it's tough. He's, uh, but he I is. Got the, I got the is, sense from him last night. Like he, he wasn't really rushing. Like he, seem like, you know, yeah, it didn't seem like he, you know, Seems ready. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, he he does seem ready. He does seem confident, but it doesn't seem like he's like, all right, give me give me the big the big dogs, and I don't want nothing else, you know. Because look at if, so what if what if Lomachenko had beat Tiafimo to what you said, Ant, where like he loses. I don't think any of us would have been like, ah, Tiafimo's garbage. You lost to Lomachenko, like you lost to an elite fighter. Um, I just I think Ant made a really good point about the marketing aspect of it, where. Boxing fans absolutely know Boots Ennis. Um, he's on the come up. He's kind of getting a little bit of mainstream crossover. Right. Um, but I don't think I don't think the risk reward makes sense for a guy like I'm just gonna say you. Right. It also doesn't make sense financially because the draw is not gonna be there, right. whether it's in a stadium or not. Um, right. So yeah, it's just a tough spot. But I'm yeah, the hype train is is real. Like. Anyone listening and wants to comment, tell me a flaw you saw in Boots Ennis. And listen, um, you're embarrassing yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and say this because like, I, I was texting somebody. I'm not gonna say who it was, but somebody texted me and said, uh, somebody <laughs> texted me and said, uh, is Jerron Ennis the real deal? And this was after like two rounds. Your response better have been holy field. We were we were in the third round, and he said, "Is is no?" They say, "Is this dude? Is this dude really the real? Is is this dude really the real?" I said, "He's a welterweight, Roy Jones Jr." Mm. That's a high. That's a high praise, and not you're not wrong, but that's high praise. And, I, I got to see him in there with better competition. Yeah. Hey, Roy did it. Roy did it just like that. Roy did it just like that. And then when they stepped up the competition, he continued to do it just like that. You know what he said? They said, I didn't fight nobody. I just make them look like nobody. <laughs> so. I, yeah. Yeah, I, think, I really think if he got a shot at one of these top five guys, it would be like Loma Tio and not like Canelo Floyd. Yeah. I think he beat Ugas right now. You know, I, I think he beats Ugas. I think he, I think he could beat Spence. You know what? I think I think Smith stops him. I don't think so. And does he beat? Does he beat something big? And he's had never been there before. Does he I beat Sean he, Porter? I will <laughs> never make a Sean Porter pick on this podcast. Oh, I, that's oh, all we do. I, Boo, Sean Porter. That's love. Right he, he, hey, that's the Porter way is not making predictions. Longer, <laughs> any other fight with Sean? I, 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 I think one. I think he gives I think he gives Sean hell. I think I think Sean might you might get him just because of work rate and yeah. physically, but yeah. I don't think yeah. that's a walk in the park for you by any stretch. Uh-uh. 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 The first five, the first five to eight, it's gonna be a it's gonna be fifty fifty. That 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 Porter Porter way Porter pressure just he never he's not ready for that man. He has not taken he never faced nothing like that. Yeah. That top level like Earl's gonna be chill out him. But <laughs> it's gonna be physical for four rounds, and then Earl's gonna beat shit up. I'm just yeah. you, you here, l- listen. When you got a guy like Jerron, Jerron grew, grew up doing this. You say he's never fought a guy like me, but you've never seen you never saw him fight in the golden gloves. Yeah, you never yeah. saw him fight in the US championships, you never f- saw him fight in the Olympic trials. Even though you're not fighting a guy that fights just like me, you you when you got to fight for six round for six days consecutively, you take your mind and your body through some things, and it's like and and it all adds up and it plays this part when it's supposed to. So I've never really been one for 
well, well, we haven't seen him against this or that yet. I'm, I've really never been one for that because I always felt like styles make fights. And when you're when you're got like I always talked about myself, I'm a showtime fighter. It don't matter what time of day it is. When the lights come on, I'm ready. I don't care what I was doing two hours before the fight. When the lights come on, it's just something about it. I'm ready. And that's how Jerron is. Jerron is like, he's just one of those guys that you put him in the ring with Sean Porter. You put him in the ring with Errol Spence Jr. You, we, we can all say he's only got 26 fights. He up there. Yeah, he's up there. 27, 20, 20, 27 fights. He's only got that. But and and he may not be ready yet. He's twenty seven and zero. Yeah. He may not be ready yet. He he's still young. I think he's only twenty three. Um, but it's just one of them situations where he gets in the ring and that night is the night for him. Hey, Sean Jatel. So my thing is, you know, I'm not taking nothing away from you. I'm just, you know, when you get up there, even with Keith Thurman and Manny Pacquiao, any one of those guys, every round is going to be a championship round. Mm-hmm. Do he got championship round in for twelve rounds? Mm. Mm. Go ahead and That's say a what good you question. said, Zytel. They saw you on Twitter. Go ahead and repeat it. I just think it's like what Sean just said is, you know, all of a sudden when you fight someone better, yeah, there's a lot more coming your way, but you still bring mm-hmm. everything to the table that you did against those lesser fighters. He, he, when he fights Errol Spence, his hands aren't going to be any slower. Mm-hmm. The, the variety punches are still going to be there. He's still going to beat Boots Ennis, and I just think, I just think he's got more than Errol. You know, Errol's, okay. Errol's main, Errol got great fundamentals, and, and Sean, correct me if I'm saying something stupid in the middle of this, but Errol okay. is is excellent. You know, like he's long and he's big, and he's he he's got, got better defense and ranginess than maybe it looks, but compared to Boots, he's kind of basic. Mm-hmm. He, he, okay, okay. You know, like Boots got more sauce. He can... He's a little, a little more can, fluid up top. You can see it. And, and the, the shorts help. Huh? Short, the short, yeah, the short, short, short help. help. They help the sauce. You know? Just, this kid is nice. He He's the first yeah. boogeyman. Errol was the last boogeyman. He's the new boogeyman. Mm. And, and I think this this boogeyman got more more tools. You know? It just, that's it. I just think if he fights him, it'll be a little bit like Loma and Tio. It'll be close. It'll it'll be a close fight, but I think this young guy just got more. Mm-hmm. Got more. Go ahead. I'm sold on him. I'm 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 completely sold on on Boosins. I remember uh, some months back, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Dame Lillard was uh, was 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 hyping him up and talking about him and all that. And and I shot Dame a text last night, like, yeah, he's special. He's he's different. Because he really is. And I think Dame, like, really just been tuned in, like, hard, hardcore. And for me, last night was that this really last night was the night where I was like, all right, all eyes on Jerron. Let me let me see what you got. And I mean, with six rounds and I don't think I don't think I don't think that there was anything that he didn't show that you could wonder whether or not he's got. That's what I'm saying. Even the but, stuff, even the stuff that like uh he he threw great straight rights to the body, but and he and he threw some good hooks to the body, but he didn't he didn't he didn't go exclusively to the body. But but if you were to ask me right now, do you think Jerron, if he had to dig deep and goes exclusively to the body and break somebody down, I'd be like, Yeah, I I, I would put my money that he could slip and get down and do what he's got to do to get there, whether he did it from the South Pole or the Orthodox side. He, he's he's the real deal. The so because this is you and because there was obviously your the top guys were all mentioned with boots. Mm-hmm. We mentioned the business kind of doesn't make sense. Does the competitor in you just want to test yourself against him? Like, I want to see if how real this dude is. The competitor in me got up this morning and ran. <laughs> <laughs> the competitor in me got up this morning and ran. So let, let's just keep it like that. You know what I mean? Like the competitor in me said, man, there's some young guys out here. They keep saying my name. I, this is literally why they keep saying my name. I know I'm not going to get in the ring with them, but if that happens to happen, let me get on this run right quick. <laughs> I don't see myself getting in the ring with Jerron. Don't see myself getting in the ring with Virgil Ortiz. Don't see myself getting in the ring with Connor Ben. Those, those kids, those young men are the future of boxing. They're definitely the future of the welterweight division. And, um, and I, and, and I'm not done with this, but while I'm doing it, I'm not getting in the ring with them young dudes. 
Yeah. And also to people that would criticize you for that, Errol's not going to do that. And Bud isn't going to do that. And Ugas isn't going to do that. So it's not like you exclusive. Like none of them are like, hell yeah. I can't wait to fight Boots. I, but I get it now. I didn't get it then, but I yeah. get it now. And, and so like, just to kind of, and I'll make it quick when, when, when I was saying, Oh yeah, I want to fight Manny Pacquiao. And then, and, and I want to fight uh, Floyd Mayweather. Then there were guys that would kind of, I guess, quote unquote, just below those guys like Marquez and like Shane uh, Mosley. Um, even at that point in time, uh, the, 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 the Andre Berto, you know, those kind of guys and all those kind of guys was like, not fighting you. What, what do I got to fight you for? I don't need to fight you. I've, I've been there. I've done that. And I'm making this amount of money. And until you can command this amount of money, I'm not going to do it. Furthermore, you're not going to mess around and give me a hard night. And then everybody looking at me twisted. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to beat you. But everybody going to be looking at me twisted after the fight. You know what I mean? So that's that's kind of where we are now. Paul, Paulie and Keith, that was like that this whole conversation, this topic, <laughs> that interaction is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. It was like, Paulie was just like, cool. Like <laughs> you did great. Yeah. Get up here. We yeah. fight for prize fighting. Yeah. Once you get the business right. And yeah. we okay, don't duck me, son. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I got to fight. I got to fight for Jerome. Okay. Not it. Hey, <laughs> AB. He ain't going to make 140 anyways. He stops. Bro. He stops him. Oh, hey, for real? Yeah, you not like to get hurt. Like, what's what? what? <laughs> I'm just I'm he saying, stops, if you he stops be, AB with it before the eighth round. I say, I think AB can take an ass over. No, yeah, he's not he's, this one, oh, not this one. <laughs> hey, Sean, it's different, yeah, yeah, because because I think that with boots, it's not going to be it can be one shot that puts you out, but he's so skilled, it's going to be 50 shots that puts you out. So, um, no, I, I think he I think he smokes AB. And you know I'm an AB fan, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I I AB, but he he would uh that would he would meet his demise in that fight. Sean, you know you say a loss, <laughs> not his permanent demise. No, 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 not permanent. Go ahead, oh, Lord. <laughs> That's, you were like in that fight. Well, Sean said in that fight he would meet his demise. I was like, whoa, whoa! Shout out to AB, Ohio's own. Go ahead, Zaito. That. That was too much. I put too much on it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was very ominous when you said demise. Yeah. <laughs> He's Ohio strong. AB can take it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, listen, man, we over our time. We got to get up out of here. We got any oh. fan questions we want to answer real quick? So there, there's one that actually goes to Ohio. So when you move down towards the Akron area from Cleveland, uh, what were the gyms you fought at in Akron? Uh, when I was – so when I started training – I was four years old. My dad was boxing at that point in time. He was boxing at Good Shepherd's Boxing Gym. And I think that that is the most um, popular gym that was in boxing uh, in Akron at that point in time. Uh, We had our own gyms. We had Samson's Boxing Club. And we also had, uh, shoot, uh, the Untouchables Boxing Club and a few others, too. And then the second question, and that was from Homer Richards on YouTube. They want to know, do you think you'd ever box in Ohio before you're done? Like at the Q or Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse? It's um, crazy. Be- Clinton State. It's crazy because uh, seeing what... what um, Ring City? Because they also mentioned... Born. They mentioned that. Here's a... How about an idea? Before, sorry to cut you off. <laughs> what about for Hall of Fame weekend in Canton? Oh, no, I didn't I didn't think about that. I, I thought about uh, the, the, Hall of, the, 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 no, the Hall of Fame outdoors of mm. the rock and roll hall of fame gotcha. because they've been doing outdoor shows. Yeah. We're getting closer to the spring summertime yeah. out there to be nice. So I did consider something like that. Um, the long short is long time ago when I fought out, out back home, was that 2013? Uh, no, that was 2010. Yeah. And I fought Russell back Jordan. home. Yeah. That was 2010. When I fought back home, it was told to me, this would be my last fight in Cleveland because I'm going to get to a point where my money is going to be too high to bring a fight to Cleveland because Cleveland can't generate, you know, everything that it would take to, to make a fight happen. I, I think that, you know, again, that was 2010. So some time has passed and I do think that it's possible now. Um, yes, I would love to fight at home, but I'm not sure if, uh, if that, if that'll ever happen. I'm not and sure. then the last one, and this is one that I've also pondered myself, Miss Misfit I stoned on uh, Instagram wants to know, how did you beat Usyk? In the amateurs, <laughs> man, amazing fight. So, 
myself and Keith Thurman, along with a few other, it was uh, 11, 11 guys on the team. I don't remember who else was there. We fought, we had the Ukraine come over for a USA versus Ukraine duel. And that was in right outside of Chicago. I don't remember the exact city, but right outside of Chicago. And Keith was 152, I was 165. So you imagine we got, I think we had 101, 106, 112, 118, 125. I mean, everybody's coming back to the locker room and they're coming back losing. You know what I mean? So me and Keith, we in the locker room, we get warmed up and all that. And we looked at each other almost like the Bash Brothers from from uh, from, Mighty, from Ducks. Mighty Ducks. Yeah, yeah. We looked at each other. And was like, yo, I ain't lo- I ain't going home with a loss. You know what I mean? So he went out there. He did his thing. I go out there against Usyk. He's tall, one sixty five, um, South Paul. And back then we and I'll tell the story exactly how we fought on the point system. And you had the uh, three out of five judges had to push a point within one second in order for you to get a point for the fight. So the first round I was winning by like maybe two points. The second round, I think the second round was tied. And then going into the third round, I was up by one point going into the third round. The other assistant coach that we had just before I got off the stool, he said, hey, Sean, he grabbed my foot. He says, man, if you line this dude up and catch him with the right hand, you're going to get him. And this third, this final round, four, we were doing four two minute rounds. I got to tell it all like it is. Yeah, yeah. Back then, we were doing four two minute rounds. So this was the fourth round, two minutes. And like less than a minute into that round, I caught him with a right hand. And the right hand, he he didn't stumble back, but he definitely took a couple steps back. Enough for me to know that he was hurt. And I I did Sean Porter, just jumped on him and I kept boxing, kept doing my <laughs> And I ended up winning the fight by four points. I ended up winning the fight by like four points. And I remember that when my hands hand was raised, we're getting points after each round. And it was a close fight all the way to the end. And I remember thinking to myself, I earned that that win. That wasn't a fight where I just got a victory because he came over to the U.S. Like, I actually earned that win, you know. And for anybody who could or wants to argue that, you could see that the points were close and very fair through the course of the entire fight, which is what, what also made me feel like I, I, it was a fair decision. You ever run into him and just say, yeah, beat the shit out of you in the amateur? No, no, never that, <laughs> never that. But I, I was in Ukraine in 2018. And uh, it was all love, man. I, I people actually talk about that fight. I completely forgot all about it. Would you um, spar him? Somebody that was the second part of the question. Would there ever be a reason to spar him? And would I spar him? Yeah, I mean, he's two hundred plus now, so no. Uh, but but would I? Yeah, I mean, if it made sense, you know, yeah. if we we're if we we're at an event or something like that, and they wanted to just get in the ring, yeah, I get in the ring with them. I yeah, like that. I, I get in the that. ring with them. My dad's been having me fight against heavyweight since I was ten years old. So you know, is what it is. Yeah, no, that was that's pretty much it. We got we still have some. We got a lot in the holster still for when the time is right. All right, cool. Yeah, we uh we, we had, had a lot long, of boxing on yesterday. Had a, we had a long day yesterday, and Carson said it wasn't too much boxing, except at the same time, except for the simultaneous <laughs> boxing. No such thing as too much boxing. Hey, listen, I got to do this too. We got. Hey, hey, Hollywood! Hey, everybody, look at his shirt. I don't know if this is official, but you know this this could be the next joint right here. If this is what y'all want, let me know if y'all like it. We we might get some produced. I know Hafey, he say he like it, so I'm gonna grab him one. Zytel wants one. I got yours. I, I'm pretty sure yeah. got more COVID nineteen on it, so I'll get it to y'all soon. Uh, this, you look like you look like you're on R and B reunion tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> no, you look like you'd be singing with next. <laughs> I'll be with next. Yeah. <laughs> Dancing real close. Oh, yeah. yeah BDA, we got to get you one too. No, Shout man. out to our yeah, producers, we, man. They're doing a great job with this. Yeah, shout out to SMF, man. We're going to collab with them and get some merch out there, man. Yep. We got to get it going. All right. Merch coming soon. Y'all heard it right here. Hey, hey shout out to SMF. So I was going to hit y'all up when I was out in Laguna, but you know, I ain't want to bother y'all guys. I was right down the street. I know y'all. Hey, we was out there living. Got a tan. Legs looking nice and black. This probably ain't even going to make the show, man. You just be talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't tell me you didn't enjoy what you saw because I know you did. What you need to do now, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like. Hit that notification button. Check us out every week, every Tuesday. Something new for you right here on the Port Away Podcast.